Well, I was in Oxford University on a sabbatical, just minding my own business, when one day the head of one of the colleges at Oxford approached me as I was having tea, and he said, hey, Marilyn, how would you like to write a biography? And of course, I thought, well, who do you have in mind? And he said, well, I'm sure you know about him. His name was Frederick W. Robertson. And he was famous in his day. Charles Dickens said that he was the greatest public speaker he, Dickens, had ever heard. So I'm sure you know about him having a PhD in English. And I had never heard of him, but I didn't say that because I thought I didn't want to look stupid. But then he helped me out. He said, you know, there's a biography of this Robertson in our library. It was written by Queen Victoria's chaplain. So why don't you read it? And then, if you like it, I think you should write a new biography. I said, well, why? A biography's already been written. I'll read it, and that's that. He said, oh, no. You see, he was considered to be a really virtuous man in his time. But recently, a friend of mine told me that a friend of his, the Bishop of Sheffield, found Robertson's diary for 1849. And the diary is written in secret code and Robertson was having affairs with the women of Brighton. So, he said, I need somebody to go find that diary if it exists, if, if there is one. I said, well, what about the bishop? He found it, he has it, he should write the biography. He said, oh, the bishop died. Oh, I said, well, what about your friend? And he said, my friend died too. I said, well, what about you? And he said, I would do it, but I'm the head of a college and I just don't have time. So if you'd be interested, read the book and let me know. So I went, I read the biography of Robertson and it put me to sleep many times. So I went back, had a meeting with Waller, the head of the college at Oxford. And he said, well, Marilyn, what do you think? And I said, great, it's a great story. <laughs> and I didn't know what I was doing because I agreed to look for a diary. And I had a hard time finding my way around Oxford, much less going all over the country. I could have been anywhere in the world. I can't even find my keys when I lose them. And I thought, how am I going to find a diary? But I said, yes. And that began my search. Six years later, let's just jump ahead. Six years later, I knew a lot about Robertson that was not in any of the three biographies already published on Robertson. And so I wrote a new biography. It's called Victorian Conscience. F.W. Robertson, because he really was the conscience of the Victorian age. He was virtuous. His sermons are wonderful. They were all published posthumously after his death. And by the way, his funeral was the largest in the history of Brighton. There were 3,000 people who marched in that procession. The city shut down. And one of the people in the procession was Lady Byron. And she made the news because she walked. She was an aristocrat. She should have been in a carriage. So the newspapers asked her about that later. Why were you walking? And she said, I'm not even worthy to walk behind his coffin. So I thought, wow, what if Lady Byron was one of those women? In any case, I set out on my journey from Oxford looking for this diary. So the story, my book, one of the things I discovered, this is not what the book's about, but I ended up at Shuckborough Hall, which is the home of Robertson's great-great-grandson. And I found a little notebook that Robertson kept, and this is one of the drawings he did when he was eight years old. There's a whole scrapbook of these drawings done between the ages of eight and 16. And they're in the book. Every chapter begins with one of the little sketches that I found in the scrapbook, and also a quotation from Robertson. I think I started to say and didn't say that the sermons were published in five volumes posthumously because Robertson had no intention of publishing any sermons. He never kept any. He delivered them and that was it. But there was a woman in his congregation who took them all in shorthand and it was from her shorthand notes that these five volumes were published. And, th and they were all out of print for a hundred years. So where did I find them? They were in Shuckborough Hall, the home of his great-great-grandson, who, by the way, is a baronet. And I write about the shooting party that I attended and all the people I met. My book is full of total strangers and guardian angels. The angels are the ones who helped me directly with my search, and the perfect strangers were those who added a note of levity in my experience. Or in sometimes, sometimes they were not notes of levity. They added little threatening 
messages. So, but they all helped me in one way or another in my search for the diary. I would like to conclude this little session by reading, why does anybody care about anybody else's life? Because who the heck's Robertson? Nobody cares anymore. So Robertson himself said this. My book's about Robertson, by the way, so why do we care about Robertson? Here's why. The deep interest of, the deep interest of biography consists in this that it is in some measure the description to us of our own inner history. Only let the inarticulate life of the peasant find for itself a distinct voice and a true biographer. Let the inward struggles which have agitated that rough frame be given faithfully to the world. And there is not a monarch whose soul will not be thrilled with those inner details of an existence with which outwardly he has not a single thought in common. 